Today we're going to talk about reactions of acids and bases. So this is a very uh, short overview about acids and bases first, and then we'll, we'll talk about three significant reactions that these things um, undertake. All right, so acids are characterized as tasting sour, and when they ionize in water, they produce hydrogen ions. And classically, bases are characterized as feeling slippery, so if somehow or another you get your fingers in a base, fingers are going to feel slippery. It's from your skin getting melted away. Uh, tasting bitter and ionizing in water to produce hydroxide ion. Of course, we're never going to taste anything in the lab, so we are uh, not going to test for acids by seeing if something is sour. But you know vinegar is sour and it's an acid. Um, okay. Now, this definition covers a lot of compounds, but it doesn't cover all acids and bases. And so, Bronsted. I believe a Danish chemist came up with a broader definition for acids and bases. And he said, instead of saying they donate hydrogen ion to solution, let's say they're a proton donor instead. It's a broader definition, but what's really a broader definition is, is the base. Okay, so where does this, this proton donor, well, if we think about it, hydrogen ion, a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. If it's lost its one electron to become a hydrogen ion, that means essentially it's a proton. Okay, so there's nothing new, there's nothing really different about this definition of an acid. But this definition of a base is much bigger. Okay, so Braun, when we think of bases, we really do think of Bronsted's uh, definition in that they have the ability to accept a hydrogen ion or accept a proton. Um, so they've got space in their molecule to pick up a hydrogen ion from the surroundings. Okay, so just a little definition of acids and bases, and we will talk about them in much more length later in the year. Strong acids and bases ionize completely in water. And we define them as strong because they are strong electrolytes. And they're strong electrolytes because they completely ionize. So, for instance, we're talking about HCl in water. This ionization is going to be complete. It's going to go to hydrogen ion plus chloride ion. We have no reverse reaction whatsoever. And so these things stay, these ions stay completely dissociated in solution. So strong acids, totally ionized, totally dissociated. There are seven strong acids that you have to memorize. They are HBr, Hydrobromic, hydro, what am, what am I doing?
hydroiodic, um, HClO3, which is chloric acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid, HNO3, which is nitric acid, H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, and last but not least, HClO4, which is perchloric acid. So hydrobromic, hydrochloric, hydroiodic, chloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, perchloric acid. Those are the seven strong acids that you have to memorize. Those are them. And so we have to know that they completely dissociate in solution. And any other acid then by default is a weak acid. So, if an acid is not one of these, then we know it's a weak acid. Okay, so how do we characterize weak acids? Weak acids and bases do not ionize completely in solution. They're not completely dissociated and they're weak electrolytes. They're weak electrolytes because they're not completely dissociated. So an example of that is going to be acetic, HC2H3, O2. So what we end up having here with this dissociation is we've got a little bit dissociating, but mostly it is all together as HC2H3O2. Today's Great American Shakeout is now over. You can return to your classrooms. Thank you. They just slightly dissociate. So there's a little bit of hydrogen and acetate ion in solution, but mostly the species in solution here is going to be HC2H3O2, not dissociate. Okay, which are weak acids? Well, as long as they're not a strong acid. Oh, I guess I should go back. What are the strong bases? Those are all the metal hydroxides. So OH minus, like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. So all of the hydroxides are strong bases. And if it's not a hydroxide and it is a proton acceptor, then we know that it is a weak base. Okay, so that's just a general overview. Now, let's look at some reactions of acids and bases. So the first one is a neutralization reaction. And a neutralization reaction occurs when an acid reacts with a base. And generally, this, is, this produces water and salt. So we're talking about aqueous solutions here, reactions that occur in an aqueous solution. So an example of this would be hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. And it doesn't matter, this can be weak acid, weak base, strong acid, weak base, weak acid, strong base, it doesn't matter. Acid plus base, whether they're weak or strong, acid plus base always gives us water and salt. Okay, so, neutralization reactions are double replacement reactions. So, our cations are going to switch places. So that's going to give us sodium chloride sodium chloride as well as all right, we're going to switch this thing. It's going to give us HOH. What is HOH? Water. H2O. 
Now, we designate water as being a pure liquid. And sodium chloride, group one metal, this thing is going to be aqueous. Okay, now the salt that forms can be numerous ionic compounds depending upon the cation of the base and the anion of the acid. Okay, so tomorrow in class what we're going to do is we're going to go through this thing to write a complete ionic and the net ionic for this neutralization reaction. Always neutralizations. Double replacement, acid plus base. Acid plus base gives us water and salt. Okay, that's one type of reaction of acids and bases. The next one I want to write a complete reaction for here, uh, balanced complete, is the reaction between an acid and either a carbonate or bicarbonate. Carbonates and bicarbonates actually behave like bases. They are bases. Um, and so, like acids reacting with any base, you're going to get water and salt, but you also get an extra added attraction. You get some carbon dioxide gas. So, let's go with some hydrochloric acid, and that's aqueous, reacting with Let's go with baking soda. Sodium bicarbonate. Okay, and that's an aqueous solution as well. Okay, so you guys, you've just got to remember that carbonates and bicarbonates behave as bases. And so when it's an acid plus a carbonate bicarbonate, it is just like acid plus base gives us water. So this one's a little weird, what happens. Water, okay, and the salt in this case is going to be sodium chloride. And then we get one more product, which is carbon dioxide gas. Now this thing is kind of funky. Um, what ends up happening here. This is easy. The sodium chloride, making the sodium chloride, that's easy to visualize. But the water, what happens is this hydrogen is going to um, bond with one of these oxygens from the carbonate and this hydrogen. Okay, so that's where the water comes from. What this hydrogen one of these oxygens. And then what's left over of this bicarbonate ion is <clears throat> carbon dioxide gas. So we'll write the net ionic, the complete ionic and the net ionic for this tomorrow. Are we balanced? I think we're balanced, yes. Okay, so that's another reaction of acids and bases that you need to memorize, really, that these are always going to be your products. Water, salt, carbon dioxide, gas, with any carbonate or bicarbonate. Acids react with certain metals, such as zinc, magnesium, and iron, to produce hydrogen gas. So up to this point, we've been doing double replacements, kind of where the cation switches, though. The, the acid with the carbonate kind of shakes things up a little bit. So this is going to be an example of a single replacement reaction where, well, let's just look at it. So for example, we've got hydrochloric acid, and this could be any acid here, reacting with, let's say, zinc solid zinc, zinc metal. And what's going to end up happening 
is that the zinc and the hydrogen are going to switch, switch, okay? So um, it's a single replacement. Zinc is going to replace the hydrogen, and the hydrogen is going to come out on its own. So one of our products here is going to be zinc chloride. And we know we need two because zinc has a positive two charge, and chloride has a negative one. So zinc has gone from being a solid to being an ion. We're going to talk about more specifically this kind of reaction tomorrow night. And uh, this is going to be aqueous. And our other product is going to be hydrogen gas. And hydrogen gas is always given off with a metal and an acid. Now, Hydrogen is always diatomic, meaning that in its element form, in its pure form, hydrogen never sits around as just one atom of hydrogen. It's diatomic, two atoms. It's always going to be H2. So if we're talking about hydrogen in a reaction, we're talking about H2. All right. Should we balance this thing? Two is all we need. All right, hydrogen is not the only element that is always diatomic when it's on its own. The Magnificent Seven. These elements always exist as two, diatomic, when they're elemental, when they're the pure element. So, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, we've already seen that in combustion reactions, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, always diatomic. And tomorrow I'll show you a little trick on the periodic table um, about these magnificent seven.